Welcome back guys into this video about challenge lab migrating a database of Amazon RDS. Now my lab is ready. Now before we start the lab, I just would like you to um, have a quick overview of what we are doing in this lab. So part in, in practice in this lab, we are going to, um, to continue what we finish off in the challenge lab of lab four. So in lab four, we create an EC2 instance. We run in that EC2 instance an Apache with MariaDB, with PHP, as well with the cafe application. Now, the scenario in this lab, if you read it carefully, that they want to create a database in RDS and migrate the DB from the instance store to the RDS MariaDB instance, because this is will enable them to take lots of administration um, uh, tasks to uh, AWS because they use a managed service. Now this lab time is about 80 minutes and there is a few things you need to pay attention to the lab, especially the parameters like the DB URL and the uh, password. So the first thing we would like you to do in task one is to create an RDS instance. Now in this particular video, I will start to mark the timestamp of these tasks. So this is enable you to skip to the right um, task if you just stuck in one of these tasks. So let us go now to AWS. Now in task one, we want to create an RDS. So we will go to RDS and this RDS will have the following um, parameters. It will be a MariaDB RDS, it will be uh, a dev and test, so I'm going to create a database now. Select MariaDB, that's going to be a dev and test. Now, if you note here, they are saying the DB identifier will be at the cafe database, so let me just put that there. And the username is going to be admin, and admin here is with lowercase, so you don't need to um, change it. Now, with the master database, Okay, now this is going to be this password here and just to make it easy I'm going to open a text editor here and this text editor will be uh, used mainly for storing all this information. So let me go back now. I want the user name of the DB. So this is the RDS. Just I don't get confused between the instance that I run in a in the AC2 and the instance that I will run in the RDS. Let me now go back and configure. Now they want us to create a general purpose SSD with a dbt2 micro. These are including in this class of DB instance. Now you, if you open this, you won't be able to see T2 micro. So you have to include the previous generation in order to get the T2 micro. By default, we need to disable storage auto scaling with no OT, um, uh, uh, multi AZ deployment. And now I'm selecting the lab VPC. There is a lab VPC uh, subnet group, so I'm going to use that. I will now for the security group, I need to remove the default security group and select the DB security group, which is already created in the system. And they want us as well, if you see here in this step, to select the first availability zone. Now they are saying that enhanced monitoring is not enabled. So I'm going to check if I have any, any uh, tick box that I need to remove, like backup, enhanced monitoring. And I think now all my database configuration are ready. So I'm going to create the DB. So my database now in creation, if you look to task two now, in task two, they want us to analyze the existing cafe application, which is basically, this is what we did in lab four. So from the console here, I'm going to go to EC2. Now I will open this in a new tab because I still need the RDS page because I'm going to refer to this later on. Now I'm going to select the running cafe server. So this cafe has the public IP. So I could copy the public IP in a new tab and I 
do just visit the cafe website with the slash cafe. Then if I go to the order history, I could see the menu as well. I could make an order um, just to make sure that I can access the DB. So this is what we need to do in step seven. And now we need to connect to the EC2. Now in the previous labs, we usually uh, uh, connect to the EC2 using SSH. In this lab, they want you to use the AWS system manager. From the connect menu, you choose the session manager, connect. This is will open a terminal for you to uh, basically access the EC2 instance in the cloud. Now, in step number eight, they want us to put these few commands there in the terminal, which is to activate basically bash terminal. And we need to switch to um, the sudo user. And now with a super user, we want to access the user, which is the EC2, the default one. And from there, I want to check that I have the correct user now, which is EC2 user. So I could go now to the EC2 user homepage. So I am now in step number uh, eight, finishing the configuration. Now in task three, guys, we want to connect to the MariaDB. So we want to check first that the MariaDB is running, which you can see here, the service is active and running. We want also to check the MySQL, the version of MySQL. And now we want to go to the AWS System Manager console and we open it and we go to the application management and we want to go and retrieve the database password. So to do so, we go back to our um, AWS console. Let me open now the system manager in a new tab. If you can't see it here in the recently visited um, uh, pages, you can just uh, search for it, guys. Now I want to go to the parameter store. Now I want to get this password, which is the DB password from the system manager. I could basically put it in my note here, the EC2 parameters now the password uh, that i might need in the future going to be this password here going back to my lab instruction they want me to put this command in my system uh, manager session manager so i'm going to go and do my sql minus u user user root with password and this is the password i just copied from the uh, system manager so i'm going to press enter and you could do right click paste and this is will paste the password you just got uh, from the system manager let me go back copy it again and then connect with minus u minus root password and then paste so i am inside the MariaDB in my EC2 instance. Now I could do simple things like show, just to check that what is basically created in this database. So show databases and then semicolon. Then I want to use the cafe underscore DB uh, just to make sure I can see all the tables I have. So show tables now, semicolon. And then I could do a few select statement to verify that I have um, everything I need from this uh, database. So I could select order item, for example, with semicolon, and this is, will show me that I have everything there in this DB. So I exit now, and by this, I will be finishing what we have to do in step number 13, and uh, we need to move now to step 15. So in step 15, guys, we want to generate a, um, a SQL dump file using the SQL dump utility. So we export everything we have in the cafe DB into a SQL file. So I'm going to copy this command as it is. So this command is using this tool basically to export the cafe DB using root a username and the password, which is this password here, guys, the password that I just copied from the system parameters. Now you could go again, copy the password just in case, right click and paste it. And now you can verify that you have this file. 
you see now I have in my uh, uh, folder here a cafe db dump.sql to make sure that you generate the dump file successfully you can just use the command cat and this is will show you that everything we need is stored in this file which is a total export of the content of the db with all the dml and the ddl statements that we have including any insert now we need to go back to the rds and we need to work with that rds to make it ready in order to be connected with this ec2 now in this time you could go to uh, the details and answer question one to four and you could also now look to establishing the network connection from the terminal running from here we want to make sure we can connect to this rds here so you can see now my rds is available now a few things i need you to take note of the endpoint so i'm going to save this as endpoint and the username and the password we use for this endpoint now if you go to the lab instruction they give you a few tips to connect to the DB from any terminal or any uh, session uh, from an EC2, you could use this command, which is MySQL minus U, which is the admin, which is the uh, username we use. And the host now is going to be changed. It's going to be the RDS endpoint. It's not going to be the local host. So if I am here in this, let me clear the screen just to make it easy for you to read. I will paste that command. Now I go back to my um, text editor, copy the RDS endpoint, press enter, and now copy the password that you specify when you create the RDS. Press enter, you should be able to connect to this. Now I'm just showing you this step by step to show you where is the error that you might face in this particular scenario. Now if you check the RDS, you go to the security of the RDS, you will find that there is a DB security group. If you go to the inbound rules, there is no inbound rule that prevents me to connect to this at the right port. So I need to add rule, select Aurora, my SQL. So I need to have a connection to open port 33006 into the RDS and in the custom don't make it anywhere because this is makes your rds not secure so i'm going to go with custom security group and i'm going to select the cafe security group now why the cafe security group if you go back to your ec2 instance this is the security group of your ec2 instance if your website so you want your website to be able to send the traffic to the rds so this is the cafe security group i want to allow only the ec2 instance to connect to rds so i'm going to collect the cafe security group press save and now go back to your session manager Control c and then run the command again then go back and use the password again that we just got from the system and paste so you can see now I have an active connection to the uh, RDS. You can do the same just to check uh, that you have a successful connection, databases, semicolon. You can see there is no cafe underscore DB because we haven't really migrated until this point. Up to this point, so we managed to connect to the RDS from the EC2. Now we could carry on and we move to the task number five. In task number five, we want to use the cafe dump file that we create and we want to import it into the database. So in step number 22, I want to put this command. Now this command require me to have the following parameters, the cafe endpoint. So I'm going to replace it here and i need as well this password here to connect so i'm going to go back to my console paste and now copy the password and paste it and press enter so you can see now i managed to import this sql file 
into my RDS instance. Now to verify this, press on the upper arrow to get to the previous command, which is to connect to the RDS. Paste again the password of the RDS, and now do the same thing, show data base this and you can see now I have cafe DB you can use that one just to verify that we import all the data that we need successfully and now show tables and now select from product table maybe semicolon uh, there is no data here so let's go to order item underscore item semicolon uh, select star sorry I, I have an error in my select star apologies for that so I need to put select star there so I think the previous um, select statement it should work select the star so I could see there's uh, some products in this DB I'm all good exit now the MySQL client from the EC2 instance and stay here don't uh, lose the connection yet so up to this we can finish all the way to task 6 now in task 6 I want to go to the system manager and update the parameter store with the new parameter that I have for my RDS with these parameters guys so let us do this now we go back to our parameter store the first thing I want to update is the DB user edit it's going to be admin instead of root save changes now the DB password is going to be edit with the new password that I have here copy this guy here and just paste it save and then the URL, if you notice, the URL is going to take the public DNS of the EC2 because it's the local host. Now we are going to uh, delete that and we put the endpoint of our RDS. Make sure you copy it successfully. And save the changes. Next step up is to go and to verify. There is a few connect steps that you could do as well to verify that you have a successful connection. So feel free to read the tips uh, in step number 26. Now let me go back, refresh the page. I should be able now to see something in my order history. Actually, I got very um, a good connection. So I could now place different type of order just to make sure my DB has no issue so all went very well so up to this point all you need to do is to submit the lab and thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one